In the last episode, I talked about how to understand a servo motor's speed torque curves. Now I'm going to go a little bit further and explain how that is developed. If you have any questions, reach out to us here at this email address and website. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. I hope this helps. There's the KT, or torque constant. When current passes through a conductor, like a copper wire, that is located in a magnetic field, it creates a force that is exerted on the conductor. Now, if that conductor is held steady, the magnets are going to move. If the magnets are held steady, the conductor is going to move. In the case of a motor, the conductor, the copper wires, are held steady, and therefore the magnets move. And that's how we control the turning of the rotor inside of a motor. This is the product of the field strength times the conductor length times the current magnitude. And it comes in units of either ounce inches per amp or newton meters per amp, depending if you're looking at the English or metric. There's also a Ke voltage constant that has uh, that is defined by when a force is applied to that conductor located in the magnetic field, causing it to move, a voltage is induced in that conductor. Again, this is the product of the field strength, the conductor length, and this time the conductor velocity. And it ends up with units of volts per thousand RPM or volts per radian per second. Again, depending on English or metric. There's a definite relationship between the two. Both of them are proportional to the same motor parameters. So there are essentially two different ways of measuring the motor operation in a reciprocal relationship. And here are the reciprocations here. Uh, the volts are units in the peak of the sine wave. And since the Ke, the voltage, is the easier of the two to measure, the Kt is typically derived from the Ke measurement. There are definitely some losses that have to be taken into account when measuring the Kt and Ke and seeing how much power goes through a motor and how efficient the motor is. There's the I squared R losses. There's eddy currents that are in the stator's iron structure. And there's hysteresis. And some of those losses are increasing exponentially with the velocity of the motor. Others are affected by the stator design, the nature of the stator iron, the air gap, etc. So that's why you get some variations in the motor designs and how well they perform. There's this thing called a thermal resistance. And the total thermal resistance theta is the sum of the winding to case, the case to mounting surface, and the mounting surface to ambient thermal resistances. So the winding to case is a function of the internal motor design. The, the theta case to the mounting is usually very low and determined by how the pilot is mounted to the surface connection. And then there's the mounting to ambient, which is the most variable, and it's determined by the mechanical design of the application. And I referred to this in the last episode, where the motor could be in a box and it has no air cooling. But you got to look at the size, you got to look at the material, you have to look at the cooling, you have to look at all the assumptions that come into play here. And if the parameters of a particular application are known, you end up with a particular equation that looks like this. Now the Ke voltage constant, if we were to graph it for a particular motor, uh, you might have a certain amount of torque here. Maybe this is ounce inches over here, 250 ounce inches, and then you have a, a speed of maybe 6,000 RPM. This is what the Ke voltage defines. And this is what the Kt torque constant defines where you get a really high speed here but a lower torque here. What the motor is capable of is the overlap and intersection of the two. So here is the continuous capability of that motor that it's uh, defined by this thermal or the KT torque constant but it's defined by the thermal properties here but it's limited by the voltage properties here. So this is what can be done all day, every day. This is the 100% duty cycle. Now the peak current is really defined by some assumptions by the designers. Typically in the industry, it's three times the continuous. So if we plot a 3x curve here, this is three times the continuous. Now we could potentially go a little bit higher, but it's really, really short. So this is typically what the industry is settled on. Sometimes you see a 2x curve instead, but that's going to be the peak region capabilities there. Uh, so what you end up with is looking like a, a, the speed torque curve here, and that's pretty typical. Continuous here, 
with a peak here, and you have a slope that is defined by the back EMF here. Now, the faster a motor goes, it turns into a generator. And as the motor spins up, it creates the back EMF. That's the voltage that it produces. When that voltage meets the voltage going in, that's the maximum speed. So the maximum voltage going in is the bus voltage of the drive. Let's say it's 120 volts AC, which gets rectified to 170 volts DC. When that motor spins fast enough, in order to get that 170 volts DC back EMF, the motor can't go any faster because there's no more potential from the drive. I hope that helps. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us here at this email address and website. And we're happy to help.